In Lithuania, after suppression of the uprising of 1863, the cultural politics of the Tsarist administration turned down the path of strict Russification. Only the Russian language was allowed in schools and offices. Lithuanian publications in the Latin alphabet were prohibited. It was also prohibited to build and reconstruct Catholic churches without getting a special permit from the government. Most churches and monasteries were closed down, and quite a few of them were sold to Orthodox believers. A special committee was set up, which was managed by the Governor-General himself and coordinated mass construction of Orthodox churches. The Museum of Antiquities under the Vilnius Archaeological Commission, which between the uprisings was an important focus of culture and supporter of art, was liquidated. Collections of books and pieces of art from the monasteries that were closed down and from private persons were taken to Moscow and St. Petersburg. The number of artists in Lithuania decreased. Some of them, Eduardas Polavičius, Jozapas Berkmanas, Antanas Zaleskis, Kazimieras Alchimavičius, Vincentas Sledzinskis, Romanas Svojnickis and others, were deported to the far reaches of Russia. Meanwhile, others emigrated to Western countries. Opportunities to study art in Vilnius were very limited. Students could learn the basics of drawing in secondary schools and moderately improve their skills in private workshops of artists who were still there. In 1864, the Icon Painting School was opened in Vilnius, and in 1866, a drawing school, managed by Ivan Trutnev, a student of the St. Petersburg Academy of Art, was founded. Eventually, it became a higher art school. Young people who wanted to get a professional artistic education were made to choose studies in art academies of the Russian Empire or foreign countries. Artists who finished their studies abroad, Pius Velonskis, Henrikas Weisenhofas, and Zygmuntas Petravichus, did not return to the homeland for a long time because of pay and more favorable working conditions abroad. Despite very unfavorable circumstances, Jonas Zinkavichus, Albertas Zametas, Eduardas Jonas, Alfredas and Eduardas Matas Romeris, Boleslavas Rusatskas, and Alexandras Straussas tried in one way or another to build on the traditions of artistic life of the first half of the 19th century. In their workshops, private art studios were managed, in which different antiquities were collected and architectural and artistic monuments, local personages and ethnographic materials were stored. During the last years of the 19th century, because the political situation slightly changed and cultural restrictions were no longer as strict, public cultural life became livelier. A lot of painters who lived abroad at that time returned to Lithuania. Art exhibitions began to be organized. In 1871, 91, 94, 97 and 99, on the initiative of the headmasters of the Vilnius Drawing School, exhibitions were held in Vilnius, and works by local artists were displayed in a museum established between 1895 and 96 in Kaunas. When the Tsarist administration restricted public life in Lithuania, most cultural practices were revived in the haven of the Catholic Church. For example, it was decided to turn the old temple at Vilnius University into a place that immortalized the memories of famous people of culture and public figures, a true national memorial. At that time, monuments for such prominent poets as Vladislava Sirokomle and Adomas Mitzkevichus were built there. Painting and graphic arts most probably remained for the most part independent among the different areas of artistic expression. Artists of the older generation, who were dispersed to different foreign countries, and the young generation of artists, who studied abroad, felt spiritually connected to their native land, and constantly returned to Lithuanian themes in their work. Common features can be seen in the style of the works, which, however, were quite different and were influenced by different schools of art. The trend towards Romanticism, which can be called Neo-Romanticism or National Romanticism during the second half of the 19th century, remained especially close to the worldview of Lithuanian painters. In their works, painters tried to immortalize national history, reveal the heroism of their ancestors' exploits and exalt the uniqueness of the nation's spirit, revealed through folk culture. The tragic theme of the failed uprising was also present in their works. When painting historical paintings, artists referred to scholarly sources, archaeological findings, data from collections of history and art and historic documents, rather than just using fiction. Painters made themselves collectors to achieve true-to-life and accurate portrayal. They collected old suits, weapons and household objects, which later they transferred to their paintings. Some painters looked for sources of national pride in the events of pagan Lithuania, while others tried to reflect the period of the Republic of the Two Nations, which was more familiar to them. 
and another group of artists paid a lot of attention to immortalizing prominent personalities of that time and recording the disappearing cultural heritage or the image of the typical Lithuanian landscape. Besides historical topics, idyllic images from the everyday life of barons and the nostalgically lyrical landscapes of the Lithuanian countryside, everything that helped to express devotion to the country's traditions and love for the simple but magically nostalgic beauty of this land were also very popular themes in painting. Neo-Romanticism was reflected particularly clearly in the graphic arts and especially in illustrations of literary works and landscapes. Napoleonas Orda, who wandered around many Lithuanian and Polish historic sites when painting architectural and historic monuments, left us perhaps the most famous cycle of landscapes. Precisely fixed images were later lithographed, and now they provide us with extremely valuable knowledge about the estate complexes that were partially destroyed or are completely gone, as well as about churches and palaces. Mikola Elvira Andriolis, a participant in the uprising of 1863 in Lithuania and Latvia, became quite famous for producing a large amount of illustrative graphic art and artistry. Besides a large number of other works, he also created the very well-known illustrations for Odomas Mitzkevich's poem Tadas Blinda. Next to painting and graphic arts, photography helped to store the vanishing inheritance and landscape. It conformed to the criteria of reality and documentation that were particularly important in the second half of the 19th century. It seemed that creators of sculptures had the hardest time in Lithuania during the second half of the 19th century. Sometimes the work was considered the activity of a professional craftsman. The workshops of sculptors and decorators filled orders for architectural sculpture and headstones of quite simple forms, like shaped obelisks, urns and crosses, were made in masonry and headstone workshops. A few metal workshops also operated in Lithuania. Mass production of artistic architectural decorative details, metal crosses and fences, was begun. The motif of a broken or pruned tree that was most popular at that time matched the spirit of neo-romanticism the best. Some sculptors created portrait busts or medallions, as well as church sculptures. Wealthier clients and patrons, just like in earlier times, entrusted the most important orders to famous foreign sculptors. The amateur painter, Elena Skirmantaitis Kirmantine, was the most surprising personality among local sculptors in this period. She created historic portraits of the Grand Dukes of Lithuania, a symbolic historic chess set, and quite a few works of art for churches. The historicism spreading all over Europe was clearly seen in the architecture of the second half of the 19th century. Different neo-styles intertwined in this trend, repetition of old historic styles and imitations. Administrative buildings, railway stations and post offices, as well as bank buildings and courthouses, all designed in the spirit of historicism, were built in Lithuanian cities. Houses and estates matched the spirit of historicism. Tomas Tyshetskis, Fulgentas Rimgaila, Karolis Gregatovičius and other graduates from the last class of architectural students at Vilnius University and other architects invited from abroad created them. They used the artistic inheritance from different periods and chose the best elements of every style. They often combined elements of different styles, the Renaissance, Baroque and Classicism, in one building. This architectural trend is called eclecticism. In some cases, the building's purpose determined the choice of the imitated style. For example, features of the Neo-Byzantine or Russian styles are obvious for the construction of Orthodox churches. Neoclassicism and neo-baroque forms were used in Catholic churches, and eventually the neo-gothic trend began to dominate. It was thought that it best matched the nature of Catholic sacramental buildings. In the works of arts and crafts, such as furniture, decoration of stoves and fireplaces, dishes and other objects, the same trends were observed. Most works were made by machine using catalogues of examples published by foreign companies and art magazines. Unique hunting sets, which were decorated with moose horns and were popular in estates, perfectly reflected the neo-romantic spirit in furniture. Unique hunters' sets, which were decorated with moose horns and were popular in estates, perfectly reflected the neo-romantic spirit in furniture. In a way, it was related with the traditions of barons. Hunting was considered to be one of the most important forms of entertainment and even a type of healthy lifestyle. From old Lithuanian crafts, the tradition of the goldsmith's profession remained strong. At the end of the 19th century, as many as eight goldsmith workshops operated in Vilnius alone, and a great number of individual craftsmen worked in the provinces.